Hi there. Welcome back to chapter 9. This is part 5 of our thermochemistry journey. And in this section, we're going to continue using equations, but this time we're going to relate it to the amount of substance. So we're going to look now at transferring energy between one object and another. So when two objects are at different temperatures, we said earlier that the heat is going to flow from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. And it's going to continue doing that until the heat is equal to one another. The amount of heat energy lost by the hot material is going to equal the amount of the heat gained by the cold material. So that's why we have a Q of one thing is equal to the negative Q of something else. So the heat and the opposite heat, so what went up and what went down are going to be equal because they're going to meet in the middle. So where we apply this is if you have a block of metal, say at 55 degrees C, and you put that in some water and the water is at 25 degrees C, the heat's going to flow from the object to the water, okay? And the temperature change is going to depend on the mass of the metal, the mass of the water, and then the specific heat capacities of each thing. So this looks just like the thing we just did, okay? The heat, the, we were doing the heat of the metal. But this time, since we know that they're going to be reach equilibrium, we can set that equal to the negative of the Q of the water. The metal one is the one that's positive because it's the higher one, okay? So if you're wondering about that. So we set those two equations, which you've already seen, equal to each other, and then we can make some decisions and figure out what's going on in a system. So my example of this is that I have a 32.6 gram cube of aluminum that's initially at 45.8 degrees C and it's submerged in 105.3 grams of water at 15.4 degrees C. What is the final temperature of both substances at equilibrium? All right, now this one is a little complicated because um, I'll show you why, but because we it's not asking me for the delta T, okay? The delta T, is, you remember, is going to be equal to T sub F minus T sub I. So I have, to, I have to plug those in, figure out what the delta T is, and then subtract to figure out what was going on, okay? So just hang with me because this one's, this one's fun. Okay, so we know that the Q of the aluminum is equal to the negative Q of the water. And so we have mass of aluminum times the C sub S of aluminum times the delta T of the aluminum is going to be equal to the mass of the water times the C sub S of the water times the delta T of the water. All right, so we've already seen that. Okay, so I'm going to plug those numbers in, the ones that I know. Okay, all right, so when I do that, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write my inventory down, okay, because I don't want to get them mixed up. All right, so the mass of the aluminum is going to be 32.5 grams. The mass of the water It's going to be 105.3 grams. Sounds like a radio station. All right. The initial temperature of the aluminum is 45.8 degrees. The initial temperature, that was aluminum, of the water is 15.4 degrees C. I know C sub S of water is 4.184, and you can use 1.8 if you want to, 4.184 joules over gram times degree C. And if you look up aluminum on the table, it's 0 0.903 joules 
per gram times degree C. Okay? So the water, you probably know at this point, but so these two we looked up in the table, right? And you know, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look and I'll make sure everything's in the right units, and they are in this case. So now I'm going to plug in what I know. All right. So I have 32.5 grams of aluminum times 0 0.903 joules over gram, <coughs> excuse me, gram degree C of aluminum times the delta T of the aluminum. Now notice I'm just doing delta T right now because I know what the initial is, but I don't know what the final is and and I'll and I'll it'll I think it you'll understand why in just a second all right and then that's going to be equal to the negative of 105.3 grams of water times 4.184 joules over gram times degree C for water times the delta T of the water. So I've got some numbers and some letters on this. So when I do, I kind of like to get them figured out. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's this, that's 29.3 times the delta T of aluminum, which is equal to a negative 440 times the delta T of the water. All right, and so, um, nee, 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 nee. okay, so, so that's kind of my first step here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange, so I've still got a number over here, so I'm going to say delta T of aluminum is equal to, and so I'm going to divide both sides by 29.3, you know how you do that, right? All right, and that's going to give us... Um, negative 440 divided by 29.3 times delta T of water. Okay, which is also is negative 15.0 times the delta T of water. Everybody with me? All right, so Delta T of the aluminum is the same as saying T sub F of aluminum minus T sub I of aluminum is equal to the negative 15.0 times the delta T of the water. Right? Okay. So... Well, let me go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just write this as um, T sub F of the water minus T sub F of um, I, I of the water, because that's what the delta T is. OK, once I do that, I can use the distributive property, hippity hoppity. And so T sub F minus T sub I of the aluminum is going to be equal to a negative 15 times T sub F minus a negative 15 times T sub I water. All right, let me, so I'm just going to break for just a second. All right, so delta T is the same as T sub F minus T sub I. And for aluminum, and it's the same with water, the T sub F minus the T sub I of the water. The final temperature is the same for both of them, okay? So since the T sub F is the, is the same for both of them, I don't have to now say it's for aluminum or for water because it's going to be the same number because once they get to equilibrium, that temperature is going to become whatever that final temperature is. With me? So I can further rearrange this to say that T sub F is equal to, so I'm going to add, which means I'm adding the 
T sub i of aluminum. So it's going to be equal to minus 15 T sub f plus, because that's a negative, minus a negative, 15 T sub i for water plus T sub i of aluminum. All right. So now I'm looking and I'm going to combine like terms. Okay, I'm going to combine like terms because um, T sub F and a negative 15 T sub F, they are multiplied by the same thing. So I'm going to bring that over here. And when I bring it over, it's going to change its sign. So it's now going to be 15.0 T sub F plus T sub F equals 15 times T sub I water plus 15, and I know it's a point oh there, sorry, times T sub I aluminum. So 15 T sub F plus T sub F gives me 16 T sub F is now equal to 15 times T sub I water. I know what that number is, right? Remember, the T sub I of the water, I know what that is. It's 15.4 degrees C. So this is 15 times 15.4 degrees C plus 15 times the initial of the aluminum, which I know was 45.8. Okay, and so I'm going to kind of go up here where I have a little bit more room. So 16 T sub F is equal to... I'm sorry, T sub F, so what am I going to do? I'm going to divide both sides by 16, right, to get that 16 over there because it's a number. So T sub F is equal to 15 times 15.4 plus 15 times 45.8 all divided by 16. And so when I plug that into my calculator, T sub F is going to be 17.3 degrees C. Okay, and I'll just tell you now, this in the thermal transfer um, universe, this is the hardest one to have to figure out, is what is this final temperature, okay? So this is the hardest one you're going to see like this. Most of the other ones are just going to say, um, find the mass of something. And, and it'll, you'll already have um, the final temperature and the initial temperature. And so you, you know what delta T is, and it's just a plug-in. Okay? So it's just using the um, equation and rearranging. So I, I did one like this, which is the hardest one, but just because it's the T sub f and it's something that you have to figure out now if you know another way of doing this that you think is easier or whatever go for it um, i try to do one where i can show all the mathematical steps and all the algebra stuff so people don't get confused okay the beauty of the recorded a lecture series is that if you were confused you can go back and look at it again um, and then you know walk through it again and and make sure that you understand it okay and here is one where um, I'm asking you for the mass of the copper and so I'm already giving you the initial temperature of each thing and the final temperature and so you can figure out what delta T is for both of those and so it's it's a, a pretty easy um, equation at that point you just rearrange the equation to find mass of copper I just want to mention one thing at the end of this section um, where I don't I'm not doing any um, problems with this actually you may see some a few things in your homework but I'm not going to have it on the exam but pressure volume work is important because you know that's how we use pistons and things like that so basically how pressure volume works is if you increase pressure 
then the volume um, decreases. If you decrease pressure, the volume increases. So like the pist that's how the pistons are working. And so as long as external pressure is constant, the work done by a piston is the negative pressure times delta V. Okay, so the, the decrease in pressure times the change in volume. So um, external pressure times the change in volume. Um, and a lot of times what you're going to see since you're doing volume is instead of joules, you're going to see it in liter atmospheres. And so I'm just letting you know that a liter atmosphere is the same as 101.3 joules. And we're going to see this in chapter 10 for gases and so that's why I don't really go into it a whole lot in this chapter okay and that will be it so now you should be able to do your calculations for thermal energy transfer between objects usually between an object and water